Matthew and Leland here from MiniWargaming.com, and it's time for another Adeptus Mechanicus Skatari, or Skatarii, review video. This will probably be our last two in this series, because uh, as far as I understand, there's nothing else coming out. Yeah, unless there's like a hidden next wave or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I know there's more Adeptus on. Mechanicus stuff that's rumored to come out in a couple more months. Yeah, but nothing yet. But that would be the Cult Mechanicus with its own codex, and we'll do review videos for that, of course, because your army is like, it feels like a half army. Whereas it stands right now. Yeah, it's an allied army. Yeah. Is what it is right yeah, now. Yeah, like the Harlequins kind of thing. Where exactly. It's, it's not quite as small as the Harlequins, but not quite big enough to really fully... St like, you could have it stand on it, its, its own. It's like the Scions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, we are going to be talking about the detachments and formations and allies of the Adeptus Mechanicus. So, this is where we get into the what they're going to be doing or how they're going to be formed into an army. I guess it's more army composition. So, in this video, we're going to start by talking about the detachments and the formations, and then we'll continue this discussion talking about the allies and everything probably in the next video. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that as we get through this. It'll be at the link in the video description below for the second video. So let's start off by talking about the detachment. Now before I go into this, just a quick rules clarification. A lot of people get confused between what a detachment is and what a formation is. Remember that in a Battle Forged list, what defines a army list as Battleforged is that it is allowed to take detachments. And it can also take formations, but everything must belong to a detachment or a formation, yes. unless otherwise stated, like the uh, Tyranid Tyrannocyte. Specifically says it does not take up a Force Org slot. So I guess you would still have to take a Combined Arms Detachment or an Allied Detachment in order for you to take one of those because it's not taking up, or a Leviathan Detachment. So those will fit into whatever. Typically, typically detachments have like your force org stuff, like your troops, HQ, elites. That's not always the case, though, especially in the Corn Demonkin and the Necron Codex with the Dakiri detachment and the Corn Demonkin, whatever their detachment was called. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, this detachment is one of our more typical ones in the sense that it, 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 it segregates things by troop, elite, fast attack, and heavy support. Yep. So, we have, uh, it, so we have some good options here. So let's take a look at the Skatari Maniple. So just to clarify, I guess I never got to the point, is that the detachment can't be brought and unbound, but a formation can. So if your list is completely composed of just formations, you could be that's, that, that could classify as a Battleforged or an unbound list. It's just detachments can only be brought with Battleforged. Yes. So I just wanted to point that out. I, I would probably be making an effort, a separate video that talks about that in more detail, but some people do get confused. So what is the Skatari Maniple. So basically it's the, it's the way you can organize your, uh, your, Skatari bring, um, your Skatari force. Now right off the bat, and a lot of people have already noticed this, they've made comments like in other sources and whatnot, there is no HQ. So there, there's no one Skatari guy that stands above all the others as, as your, your leader or whatnot. Now fluff wise that's because that's represented by the Doctrine of Imperatives, yes. where the tech priest is off somewhere else, whether in orbit or whatever, Controlling watching everything, everything yeah. and saying, okay, plus one blizzard skill, plus one weapon skill, and organizing people. I, I prefer Dance My Little Puppets. Yeah, Dance, Dance My Little Puppets, <laughs> essentially, essentially yeah. what it is. Um, so yeah, there, there's, no, there's no HQ. Now, of course, you can still, you can still give one of, your, uh, one of your alphas Warlord or something like that um, for the Warlord traits and everything. Um, but yeah, that, that's something that a lot of people are still kind of coming to grips to with some of these new books. Yeah, the Harlequins are the same thing. Yeah, where they're, they're missing the, that HQ choice. Now the main implication of not having an HQ choice is that you cannot bring the Skatari as a combined arms attachment or as an allied detachment. <coughs> and that really, really, really kind of disappoints me because I am an advocate of have as many different ways to play the game as possible. And so the fact that I can't bring them as a combined arms attachment or an allied detachment is kind of annoying. An allied detachment is just another way to build it. It's one HQ, one troop, and then you can bring your extra elite fast attack heavy support, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you get objectives secured with combined armed and with allied detachment. It just gives you more ways to do it. But we're, as you're going to see, if you're playing Battleforged, you're kind of limited by what is available in this book. And I had the same complaint with the Harlequins. That even though they had like half a dozen formations, they were all very restrictive formations. Now, thankfully, the Skatari Maniple detachment mm -hmm. is not as restrictive as the Harlequin detachment. So let's go into actually exactly what it is that you can bring with that. 
Okay, so well, starting with the Skatari Maniple, the, the benefits you get right off the bat is two special rules, the Crux Mechanicus and the Tireless Advance. So the Crux Mechanicus, that operates like your, your standard benefit to a, uh, to a combined arms where you get to re-roll your uh, Warlord trait. If you take it from the Skatari book. If you take book. it from the Skatari book. They yes. are allowed to take it from the other books, from the main rule book, but they don't get to re-roll that takes one. those ones these days? Oh, I do. I think really? they're awesome. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, the tactical ones, the, if you're dealing with a lot of reserve, the strategic ones are good. I, I don't think I've Command actually... Command benefits are awesome. You get the bubbles around your Warlord yeah. that gives everybody else benefits. I don't think I've actually run from that list since, uh, since my Grey Knights got updated. The personal one is my least favorite, but I, I do like all three other of those Warlord traits. Okay, so fair enough. There are people who take that. Um, but still, it, it's being able to reroll on that chart is kind of nice, especially as we discussed, there's the, uh, the three later... Uh, uh, Warlord traits that we that we both like. Yeah, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the other thing that the Crux Mechanicus grants is your Warlord grant, uh, gets preferred enemy, which also gets onto his unit as per the preferred yeah. enemy special rule. It's not huge. Uh, but preferred well, enemy on a maxed out squad of Rangers. It, it's good. It's Vanguard, Rust Stalkers, or the Infiltrators. That's. I, I'm not trying to say it's bad. Mm -hmm. I, I'm. I don't think it's a game changer. I, I don't think this is going to be the thing that wins you games. But it's definitely going to be the thing that gives you better position. Yeah, well, it's especially there's some certain specific situations where it's going to be uh, useful, especially if you bring the plasma. Yeah. All of a sudden, the preferred enemy lets you reroll ones, and so your plasmas are now rerolling those those gets hot rolls. Yeah, and that'll keep you alive more. And this preferred enemy in, in general is good for anything. It's anything, unless you're like a specific anti tank hunter, then you only get the benefit in the to hit, not in the armor penetration result. But still, it's, it, I think getting a preferred enemy on your main unit... It's still really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's still really good. And this is not even... It, yeah. And that's in addition to his, whatever his Warlord yeah, trait is. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just saying it's something that... It's a nice win more thing for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, could, I could easily live without it. Yes. Is the thing. Uh, and then the other thing that they get is Tireless Advance. Now, this one is really cool because any any unit from the Skatari Maniple with Tireless Advance... They get Crusader and Scout. Yeah, Scout being the really cool one. Yeah. Now there is one caveat with Scout that they can't infiltrate. Or wait, is it that they, they can't, can't inf outflank? They can't outflank unless they, can they already had a special rule like exactly. infiltrate that allowed them to outflank. But the fact that your entire army can scout, like that's a lot of redeployments right off the get go. Yes, like for the yeah. most part, six inch redeployments. Remember, Dune Strider won't affect that. No, it won't because it doesn't say they move six inches. Yeah. They redeploy six inches. It specifies that. Um, beast stuff get to redeploy 12, so they everything moves around six inches after everybody's deployed, which, like yeah. you said, is a big advantage, especially if you're the one deploying first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about what is required for this, this is what I like. In the Harlequin Codex, the requirements and the, uh, and the optional stuff basically really forced your hand into what you were going to bring. This one is a lot more loose. The only requirement is that you bring two troop choices, and that's your Rangers and Vanguard. And for anybody who likes min-maxing within the force organization kind of slots, that's really easy to do with this because yeah. a min squad of rangers is forty. No, they're fifty-five. I think. I think the, well, the vanguard. Is, yeah, the one of them is yeah. forty-five points. But they're dirt cheap. Yeah, and that's still an effective unit. Like even if you give them no upgrades, that five-man squad is still it's still got some good weapons. Oh, so yeah. If you bring two five-man squads, you've paid less than a hundred points, and then you can focus on everything else that you want. And the other things that you can bring is an optional six troops. So I remember when we were talking about the Vanguard and Rangers, I thought one of the fun ways to play them would be to just to spam five-man squads. Well, the Skatari Maniple allows you to spam as many Vanguard and Ranger squads as you want, as long as you do it in twos. Or even, heck, you could have that one odd one because it can go in the other one. Because each, because you could bring multiple Maniples. Yeah. Each Skatari Maniple requires two and can bring up to eight. So if you wanted to bring... 10 groups of five, well, you bring one maniple that has eight of them and one maniple that has two. If you want to bring 11, well, then it's one maniple with seven and one with three, or one with four, or whatever it works. And, it, and it's still dirt cheap to do. Yeah, like that's, you, that's a lot of guys. You can throw a lot of bodies on the table with very effective yeah. base weaponry, no less. And I'm not really talking about min-maxing or spamming. I'm just talking about the fact that the Skatari maniple detachment allows you to do that. Yeah. Whereas, like, and I keep going back to the Harlequin one because it's the most disappointing one to me is the, how much it forces you into certain things. It just still forces you to bring it exactly certain ways, including the way their transports work. It's just really restrictive. So this one is two troops, optional, and an additional six troops, so between two and eight troops. 
And then also optional are four elites. So that's your rust stalkers and your infiltrators. Yeah. You have <coughs> two fast attacks. So that's your iron strider. Well, it's your, your Sidonian dragoons. Oh, sorry, dragoon, yeah, not the iron strider. The Sidonian strider. dragoons. The dragoon. So the one that has the double sniper rifle, or I guess the taser, the taser if, lance, you, yeah. if you want to do that one too. And then four heavy support. So that's the the combination of your Balistari. Yeah, the Iron Strider Balistari and the Onagar Dune Walkers. And you can even bring a fortification. Yep. And once again, is it is fortif fortifications aren't maximized to one per army. It's just, it's just based on the detachment. I think so, so, yeah. so if you wanted like let's say let's say your army was composed of six troop choices, a few elites, fast attack, heavy support, and it all could fit under one manifold, but you wanted to bring two Aegis defense lines. No problem. Break off two of those troop choices, as long as you have at least four. And you can bring another Skatari Maniple, which is the two troop choices and an optional fortification. I, I never really thought about that before. So like all, that. Yeah, so you could yeah. spam Aegis defense lines with this one. Unless I'm missing a rule that says you can only have one fortification per army. Wouldn't be here. It might be in the main rule book. But it would allow you to do that. Now, I'm not a proponent for cheesing. I, but I am a proponent or an advocate for somebody who likes to have the options. Of yeah. what I want to do. Yeah. And so Player I like agency that. Is yes. really nice. So the, this detachment I really like. The fact that it gives Scout, Crusader, a Warlord has preferred enemy, gets to reroll his Warlord trait, those are all awesome. But it's the fact that it has this variety within the detachment. You want to bring three fast attack instead of two? No problem. Just bring four troop choices and you can do that. And, and it's really nice that you can do that as well because just looking at the mana pool alone, like if you were limited to just the one mana pool, I would feel like there's too much competition in the heavy slot. Yeah, well, well, there's four heavy support slots. So I don't know. Too much competition. I, I, I want a lot of Onager Dune Walkers. But they're so expensive right. that you're not going to be able to bring a lot of them anyways. Bring 12 of them at 90 points of pop. And right, yeah. yeah, exactly. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you yeah. could bring 12 of them. That's for your four heavy but, support. But then I like the Balistari as well. Yeah, well, then so, that's, that's where the Maniple is nice. And that's that where the, yeah, exactly. That's where the Maniple comes in really effectively where, okay, you know, just take an extra two troops and start splitting things up. Yeah. Which is and really once nice. again, those two troops can cost you as little <laughs> as 90 points. Yeah. And so that is a very cheap tax, especially because that 90 points is not just dead weight. They're yeah. actually good. Yeah, they can definitely do things. Yeah, they're, they're, just, not, they're not useless. It's, it's, a nice, it's a nice setup. Yes. It really is. Uh, it gives lots of freedom, lots of, uh, lots of maneuverability, flexibility. And honestly, I don't see much of a drawback to it. Uh, besides the fact that some of the other formations have other special rules that you might want instead. But it's just, it's nice and flexible. The, the min two troops, and that's it. It gives you, that, that's what opens up everything. Yeah. The, the requirement is what opens up everything. The fact that it's just the two troops that you could just put 90 points of guys in there yeah. and open up a second one. I really like that. So good job on that detachment games workshop. Oh, definitely. Design team, because I do like the... Where, yeah, of where, of course. my four feel no pain though? <laughs> you know what? The, 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 that's that whole other video. <laughs> We're not going to go into that. So let's jump to the formations. So we have four formations, but really three. Yeah. Because one formation is a formation of formations, which is going to be so many points that you're never going to see it. Yeah. Um, so the first one is the Battle Maniple. And now just so before, not the Skatari Maniple. Not the Skatari one. The no. Battle Maniple. There's a difference. Now this one, uh, you're basically required to take one of everything. <laughs> this is the Games Workshop uh, wanting you to pre-order everything. I, I think the only place where you really have an option is when it comes to... Uh, you can either take one Sidonian Dragoon or one Balistari. But you're still the same box. Still so the same still box. it's still the Games Workshop's way of getting you to buy everything. Yeah. So you have to take one of everything. Now before we started filming these, I actually did some quick math. I don't remember the exact number. But if you were to take a bare bones of everything in this formation, it's roughly 620 points. In other words, most likely if you take the Battle Maniple, it is going to be your army. Yeah. Maybe throwing in the, if, if you're, if, assuming you're sticking to a full Admech army and not any allies. And maybe you're throwing in the Skatari Maniple detachment to kind of add in those things that you want. Yeah, so it's... It's not terribly expensive, but it's very easy to fill up those points. So if you could somehow have, if you wanted to build that army anyways, as if this is what you want, because essentially if we go back to the detachment and compare it, this has one Vanguard, one Ranger. So that's two troop choices. Yep. It has one Rust Stalker, one Infiltrator. That's two elite choices. It has one unit of Dragoons or Balistari, so that's either fast attack or heavy, mm -hmm. and one unit of Dune Crawlers, so that's heavy. So this all fits within yes. the detachment. It doesn't mean you get to double up. I don't know that it matters because it has the same rules anyways. But what it does mean is that if you were a kind of going to build the army almost exactly like this, it's worth 
bringing this instead. Yeah. Because it has exactly the same special rules, the Crux Mechanicus and the Tireless Advance, like we already talked about, but it has one additional. Yeah, it has the data lock. Now, what this basically is, it's a 12-inch uh, Leadership 10 bubble from the Onager Dune Walker. And that, that's great, just in the sense that it's going to give you an extra little bit of security from running away, from being pinned. Now, only and, models from the formation. Yeah, only not models from the not formation. Not Skitari models within 12 yeah. inches, formation models within yeah. 12 inches. So that's, yeah. you gotta, you'd have to remember, if you do bring some other formations, to know which ones are from which. But if you're considering, even if you just bring one unit of the Onager Dune Walkers, with how big those bases are and how much space that they take up, you can cover a really big area with yeah. that 12 inch bubble. Yeah. Because there's two, you get two feet right off the bat. Yeah. And plus, then, plus the width plus of the model. Plus the width of the model, plus the size of the formation. Yeah. So, are the uh, the squadron rather. Yeah. So, when you consider that the squadron, uh, squadron coherency is what, four inches? Yeah. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, there's an extra eight inches on top of it. Even that. if you just have two, that's four inches between them, plus the size of the base, plus 12 inches. Yeah. And uh, you, it, it does force you to kind of stick with your army and keep more of a bubble formation thing, but um, it, it, even if you only keep some of them there, it can really make a difference. Yeah. And, but basically what we're getting at, it's a big bubble. It's a really big it's bubble. It's a big bubble. It's a big bubble. <laughs> and that, that's really cool. I mean, it's, with the way things are going these days where you, where you need to stay on objectives or you need to be able to make your overwatch or you need, there's so many things that you need to be able to move around for. And as soon as you start failing leadership checks, typically you're being forced to either move a direction you don't want to go or you're stuck. And these guys on, on average, without all their upgrades of the, 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 the data tether and all that kind of stuff, they're only space marine leadership. So stress, leadership eight and nine, yeah. and nine being the, the alphas. That's a good leadership, but having this, this kind of backup leadership 10, uh, now there's lots of ways you could get the extra leadership. You can upgrade them to have the data tethers. Mm -hmm. They, if they're near the Dragoons or the Iron Striders, they get the plus one leadership yeah. as well. So this, this isn't game changing, it's just nice extra. So that's why I'm saying yeah. if you were gonna build an army that if you, if you could take that detachment and make it a battle maniple, and maybe throw in a second detachment to get your extra couple troops that maybe you wanted and maybe that extra elite slot that you wanted, then I would definitely do that. It just makes sense to bring it this way and get that extra rule. It's not it's not a game changing rule, yeah. but it's it's just a nice little extra. A nice little extra bit of rule. Yeah. Yeah. Now so. then you have the war cohort. Yeah. Now this the, one is it's three battle maniples. Yeah. yeah. Say that ten times fast. I don't want three wanna. battle maniple, battle maniple, battle maniple. Okay, there you go. You made it three times. Yeah, I did it three times. Um, yeah. So the war cohort itself, it's just given the fact that a bare bones battle maniple is going to run you, you know, just over six hundred points. The likelihood of seeing a full war ho cohort outside of Apocalypse Sides games is very slim. Probably 2,500 points minimum, because 600 something times three is over 1,800, and that's with no upgrades. Yeah. No upgrade, no adding to the units. Everything's just, and you don't want that. You want, mm -hmm. you want, like the upgrades are what makes this army. So you're probably looking at the average battle maniple being. Um, Probably closer to a thousand points. Yeah. So if you're bringing a war cohort, yes, you could probably have one of the maniples just be min squads of stuff, and so you. But you're looking at twenty five hundred yeah. to three thousand points. And personally, I think what you're trading out isn't really worth it, because um, if you look at it, and just from quickly reading this, it looks like you actually lose. Title. No, you still get the benefits from the other. So you're still going to get those benefits. Okay. Yeah. The, um, the, you do gain. Or you only gain. You only gain one one ability, which is once per game, you can reuse one of your doctor imperatives. Which is nice, because if you've already used your plus three ballistic skill one, you could use it again. Yeah. Uh, but if you're playing a 3,000 point game, you don't want to be restricted to bring three of everything. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's going to be your ideal army. I think you're going to want, uh, at th that point, you're going to want allies. Yeah, you're going to want more variety. Because you're going to be, you're not going to have the things necessary to deal with some of the threats out there. Where at the smaller point games, 1,500 points, your opponent won't have as many points either to bring all the stuff that you're really going to need help with. Yeah. So I, so I, I don't think we're going to see war cohorts. Yeah. Except just, for maybe the occasional fun game. Yeah. Just for how clunky they are. Yeah. To, to use, um, which is unfortunate because I like I like the idea. Well, I've seen formations of formations yeah. before, uh, such as the Tyranid one, which is it's like I think it worked out to be like five thousand points. But if you brought it, it was really cool. It it, it it gave huge benefits. This one doesn't even give that huge a benefit. No. The Tyranid one did. And then, of course, we have the new Necron Dekirin detachment and the Corn Demonkin one, where it's a detachment of formations, but it's still 
it's different because it has the has the variety in it that lets you play it at a low points level or at a higher points level. I, I think the really cool thing to take away from things like the War Cohort, though, it's a really cool direction that Games Workshop is taking the rules, and I think we're going to see some interesting things come out of it down the road. Yeah, it does um, restrict your army, but as long as there's other options, yes. that's not a horrible thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you have to take the War Cohort, Exactly, right? there are plenty of other options. Exactly. So we have two other formations, and these ones deal specifically with how to bring some of the other stuff without paying the attacks of the troops mm -hmm. or the other ones. So we have the Sicarian Kilclade. Yes. And this one is three units of Rust Stalkers and one unit of Infiltrators. Uh, so that's four elite slots, basically, and you don't have to pay the 90 points for it because it was only three elite slots in the Maniple anyways. Yeah. And this also allows you... These, these are your allied detachments, essentially. When four the, elite slots. Are you allowed to take four elite slots in the <laughs> detachment? In the uh, Skitari Manor? I thought it was yeah, three. four elites. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, four elites. Yeah, so basically it allows you to bring four elites without paying the 90-point tax. Mm. And so, but it gives you different benefits. Now, what I, when we, what I was going to say is that when you're looking at these smaller formations, or the ones that are specifically for a couple of units, this is kind of your allied detachments. Yeah. So if you're bringing another army, then this is, th where this is, this is how you can, like, if you're yeah. like, oh, I want to bring some rest stalkers. So this one has no restrictions, so you can upgrade them however you want. And then they have two special rules, but they don't have the Scout and Crusade, they don't have the reroll Warlord trait and all that. Yeah. But they do have Malignant Susurrations? However you pronounce it, yeah. Susurrations. Um, I like this one just because it modifies that Neurostatic Aura rule, which I really like from the, uh, from the, infiltrators. the infiltrators. So normally the Infiltrators have the six inch bubble that if you, uh, an enemy unit's in there, they get minus one weapon skill, ballistic skill, initiative, and leadership. Yep. Now that's increased to 12 inches. Yeah, and I, I really like this, especially for an infiltrating unit. Uh, now you it, only have the one infiltrator unit, though, in this formation. Oh, that's, that's true, but so. when you can infiltrate 12 inches out of line of sight, you can put stuff into that bubble. Or 18 inches and then Dune Strider right up yeah, there anyways. Yeah, so there's, it, it gives them a little bit more flexibility with it, and I really like that rule to begin with, so just getting a little bit more use out of it is really kind of nice. Yeah. And when we combine that with that one relic, which uh, the pistol that you love, yep. which forces an initiative test yep. or be removed from play, these guys with their bubble at minus one initiative. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice. Like and it. the infiltrators are the ones that can take it. The infiltrators are. Not the other ones. So the infiltrator's job is to run up and use that pistol to remove something from play. Yep. And then they have Slaughter Sprint. This one's really cool. Once per game on any game turn after the first. After the first. Not like the Great Knight's shunt and... Punch, whatever that was called. Oh, the, the first old, game the old shunt punch? Yeah, the, the <laughs> Sicarian Rest Dockers from this formation can charge in the assault phase even if they made a run move. Now remember... I feel like we got some Tyranid in here. No, this is Orc. This oh. is an Orc Wog. Except better because because of Doom Strider, normally you only get the plus three inches on your movement and then plus three inches on your assault. So essentially it works out to being about the same as having a beast or a cavalry who move 12 and then charge 12, you know, if you roll really well. But this gets you a run move with plus three as well. And so you combine that, and these guys are just skittering across the table. So you're moving nine inches, then you're running minimum four inches. And yeah, then charging And then minimum. you're charging a minimum of five inches. Well, minimum of three if you're thinking about difficult terrain. Okay, yeah. But, um, and that's just the rest stalkers, no, not the yeah. infiltrators. But that's still pretty awesome. So you, yeah. have, you have three units of guys who all of a sudden can just book it. Oh yeah, and yeah, they're and, the, and rust stalkers are close combat guys, so yeah. there's no real disadvantage to. They're definitely the ones you want to be able to book it across the table. Yeah, so you combine that with the infiltrators infiltrating, having a big bubble, and this could be a pretty serious kill squad. Mm -hmm. It's it's still it's still toughness three, so you know if they get looked at a little too hardly, they're gonna die. But I'm definitely gonna want to try this. Yes, like we 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 have enough for the studio that I'm gonna want to run this. I'm gonna want to try it. I think it's worth giving up the scout. I th it might be. The Crusader is, is too bad that it doesn't combine with this because mm. then they get that extra further run. Uh, other than that, and it, it also means that if you choose a Warlord from this formation, he's not going to get Preferred Enemy okay. and he's not going to get to reroll. So if you wanted your Warlord to be an Infiltrator Alpha or a Rustocker Alpha, then maybe this is not the best one, but still so many benefits. <laughs> yeah. I would say that if you are planning on bringing four Elites in your army, that you take them out of whatever you were about to put them in. And run the kill clade? And st stick them in here. I think I, it's worth it. I think so too. Without I, one of them being your warlord. I still put your warlord somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Benefit from that reroll but that you it, really need. It's definitely a really nice formation. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and it'll be a really cool allied formation too. So you just plop them down. They don't need anybody else's help. They still have their doctrine and imperatives. 
so they can get the extra weapon skill, which is what they'll be really hammering for. So yeah. imagine the turn that they all charge in, and you've given them plus three weapon skill. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're going to be hitting almost everything in the game on threes. Heck, you could still make one of them the Warlord and just hope for the, uh, the Zealot one and make everything Hatred and Fearless as well. <laughs> That would be awesome. That would be pretty cool. That's better than Preferred Enemy, at least for the first turn of combat. That would be pretty cool, yeah. So. And then finally we have our <laughs> Iron Strider Cavaliers. Or Cavalier. If it's French, which it's not. So, so which, what is this com composed of? So this one has two units of the Sidonian Dragoons. So they're the ones with the, the uh, Taser Lance or the, um, or the Sniper snipers. Rifle. Uh, and one unit of the Iron Strider Balistari. So, so that's our heavy that, support. Yeah, the heavy support ones. Um, so that, that's basically how you set it up. So, you know, three to nine of these walkers, which in and of itself isn't too bad. No. Oh, no, sorry, more than that. Sorry. No, three, three to three 18. To three to 18. <laughs> I, I do math good. Yeah. Um, so three to 18 of these walkers, which in and of itself is, yeah, that, can be, that can be problematic. Um, and they're granted, there's actually a bunch of special rules. And I think they're going to combine in seriously awesome ways. Yeah. So right off the bat, they have two standard universal rules, which is acute senses and outflank. Yeah, which acute senses is built for outflank. Yeah. Because acute senses lets you re-roll when determining which side you come in when you outflank. Yeah. So yeah. So that alone, I feel, makes the formation worth it. Yeah, because with the Dune Strider, when they're outflanking, they're coming in nine inches. And now outflank <coughs> since 7th edition has become a shooting game rather than a close combat. Because before it was like outflank the close combat guys, they run on and charge, can't do that in 7th edition, so it's become more shooters that want to outflank. Well, guess what? These guys are pretty good shooters. Yeah, they can put on a lot of shots. And they're 9 inch movement, so they can really get into range of whatever yeah. they want. And they get to choose which side they want, essentially, because you get a re-roll. Yeah. And you have a 2 out of 3 chance with the um, outflank roll to choose, choose your side, because yeah. it's going to be one that you want, so there's 2 out of... Yeah. Six chance, and then the two out of six of being able to choose which one you want. And given the range of their weapons, they can reach out and touch most stuff. Yes. Which is really nice. Yeah. Um, the, then they have the ident confirmed. Yeah. So this one basically, they get to nominate a character in the enemy unit. At the start get, of the first game turn. At the start of the first game turn. So now and when they come on, because other things do that, <laughs> like the snipers from the Necrons, the Death Marks, they have yeah. to choose it when they're deployed. So, so that does change how it works. So, but basically, it gives them a reroll to what is it? Just a wound? To wound? Yeah, just a reroll to wound, which all the for, all the formation gets that. Which is which is really cool, especially once you factor in that if you give them the sniper rifles, there's uh, uh, precision. Precision. Well, shot. it's the character and his unit. Oh, and his unit. Not okay. just a character. So they mark a character. So there has to be a character to mark, yeah. and the character and his unit. So if it's an independent character and he joins a unit, he's basically saying to that unit, "Sorry, guys, you're screwed." <laughs> Because you're about to get sniped like crazy. Um, or I also like the, the idea of taking it against, say, a Tyranid Force with a Hive Tyrant. Yeah. Because the Hive Tyrant's a character. So all of a sudden you're re-rolling the wounds on, uh, against the Hive Tyrant. Yeah. And then if you think about, even if he's flying, your Iron Strider can use his Cognus weapons. Oh, wait. <coughs> yeah, because he's already re-rolling to hit. And then he'll get to re-roll to wounds yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I don't all, know if that'll be quite as effective as some other things, but... It's an it's a nice it's extra option. little bit of, a bit of uh, bit of ability, yeah. Yeah, but rerolling to wound, like think about that with a unit of the dragoons with the snipers. All of a sudden, when they're shooting, they're rerolling to hit, because they or sorry, they're rerolling to wound, and that's a big deal because they're looking for those sixes. Yeah, and because those sixes are two wounds, AP two, uh, yeah. and they, that's what they're really looking for. So getting to reroll your your failed wounds because they're wounding on a 4 plus being a sniper, so that's half of their wounds get re-rolled. So you have two chances, or you have one and a half chances at getting those sixes, so that really... It makes them really a very killy squad. Yeah. Or squadron, which is really nice. Against that thing that they've, they've yeah. chosen. But you know what, they're, they're going to be able to target it, and they're going to be able to go after it like a hound dog. Yes. Which is really like nice. Like a hound dog. Yeah, exactly. That's right. like, cause, that, that's, exactly. That's, hound dog, that's, that's, the, that's what came to your mind. Hound dog. <laughs> a hound dog. Well, a hound dog's going to get it. Well, it's like, it's like a hound dog. It's what chases the foxes, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm thinking of old British sports. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, I'm thinking of old British sports. All right. Come on, so, aren't you a monarchist? <laughs> and they also have mind-linked hunters. And this one's cool <laughs> because they can, they basically, when they fire through other squads from this, or other units from this formation, you don't get cover. Well, yeah, I think because you can choose where the line of sight is being traced through, isn't it? No, no. It's just that if they shoot through this. So if you have a Dragoon squad and another yeah. Dragoon squad and one fires through it to hit a guy, normally that would confer a five-up cover save. But in this formation, okay. it does not. I, I see. Okay. 
Yeah. That, that's actually a little bit better than the way I read it. I was reading it that uh, you you could choose any one of the th- uh, the models in it to try ace line of sight, but uh, yours is actually better. I like yours more. And then finally, their last rule is that they all reserve together. In other words, you do one reserve roll, and they all come on or don't come on together. And that's nice because... Um, Could you imagine 18 of these things coming on one flank? There's that for one thing. And the other thing is because they work together so well, like not granting cover saves, and they get to choose a target. And Because basically what they're probably going to do is you're going to outflank them, choose a target, and then do everything in your power to kill that target that turn. And with three units of these guys, even if they're only like units of three, you probably are going to succeed. I don't care what it is. Because it's not a vehicle, unless it's a character vehicle, which is very rare. And so they're going to be able to come in, use their snipers, because they're not going to be... Ta- these, these are not going to be outfitted with tasers. No. Because these are outflanking. They're shooters. Yeah. And so they come in with their snipers. They come in with their phosphor weapons. Yeah. They come in with the, the Cognus autocannon or last cannon, whichever you prefer. And they choose a character and say, you, your unit is screwed. I'm sorry. And they, I don't care if you're Terminators or if you're Tyranid Warriors, or you're Necron something or other, they're going to be able to deal enough firepower to oh, yeah. seriously hurt, if not totally destroy it, that unit. It's just a massive fuselade. Yeah. Which is yeah. really nice. One of the things I really like about this one as well, is, and it's because of this, the new Titans rules that I really like it, you can actually have a big chunk of your army coming on right off, um, uh, right off the flank. So right there, your opponent's going to be mindful of this the entire game, and either choose one flank over the other flank, or bunch up in the middle. So you can, you can really play a game of board control because of that. And probably the most terrifying thing is that what I missed as well is that you get to start rolling on turn one. Yep. Turn one. Yep. Take that, Grey Knights, your stupid nemesis strike force that gets to roll on turn one. Now somebody else gets to do it. Too bad it's one of your allies and not one of my <laughs> allies. But I'll take what I can get when, when fighting there. So that, I think that formation is probably my favorite. It seems it's a to, great one. It seems to be, it might be a, I don't even think it'll be a glass hammer because yeah, they're only armor 11 or armor 12, but, but there's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. That, and they're all gonna have invulnerable saves or cover saves because they can give each other cover mm. without worrying about giving somebody else cover. Yeah. And that's a big deal because normally you're like, okay, I gotta spread them out in such a way that they don't give each other cover because that means I'll be giving him cover. But now, no, not a problem. Screen yeah. all you want. Like you're, put one in front of the other, in front of the other. So the front and put, make that front squad the dragoons who yeah they they screen the uh, the balistari behind them yeah yeah because don't they have shrouded too? Uh, I don't remember them having shrouded. I think one of them does. Either dragoons or the iron striders. No, I don't think so. Who has shrouded? Uh, I thought that was the Sicarian infiltrators. Yeah, it might be they what it is. They have stealth. Oh no, you're right. The dragoons do have uh, 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 incense cloud for a five up cover save. Oh, it's not shrouded. Yeah, it's a, it's that's a different That's too rule. bad. It's a different so you put the Dragoons out front, <coughs> and they'll have the 5-up cover, and then the guys behind them will have 5-up cover from being intervening. So but because you can do it on first turn, you might even have night fighting going on. Yeah. So that 5-up becomes cover. a 4-up. So there, there's a lot of fun shenanigans there. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty awesome. I, I like it. I, I really do. Okay, well, those are the formations and the detachment. So thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can work with different allies, start doing some real theory crafting here, and uh, what we would do, such as transports, because that's one thing that they're lacking, is how to bring in some transports from some allies and the different Imperium and how that'll work together. So go ahead, click the link below, and happy working.